as 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 much as some of John MacArthur's Bible teaching is solid, I don't know how how you use this sort of language. Chattel slavery was extremely offensive to God, extremely offensive to the Imago Dei. But that's not slavery in our context. Bruce Lawn. Maybe, maybe I'm hearing this wrong. Maybe there's context to this clip. You guys know me. I love Jesus. I love the Word of God. I love my Reformed brothers and sisters. I love my Calvinist folks, right? But I also love my charismatic folks. I'm ca I'm charismatic. I'm not a Calvinist, okay? But one of the most beloved Calvinists had a clip that was sent to me by Victor Marx that I don't know what to do with this, okay? Now, maybe I'm tripping. So I'm going to play you guys something, and you guys tell me if I'm bugging, because maybe I'm missing the context. It is a little strange that um, we have such an aversion to slavery uh, because historically there have been abuses. You know, there have been abuses in marriage. We don't have an aversion to marriage, particularly, because there have been abuses. There, uh, there are parents who abuse their children. We don't have an aversion to having children because some parents have been abusive. Of course, it can have any kind of situation where abuse can, can be involved. The reason unions grew up in America was not to free slaves. The reason unions grew up in America was because there were people who had businesses and they were abusing their employees. So to throw out slavery as a concept simply because there have been abuses, I think, is to miss the point. In any kind of human relationship, there can be abuses. There can also be benefits. For many people, poor people, perhaps people who weren't educated, perhaps people who had no other opportunity, working for a gentle caring, loving master was the best of all possible worlds. If you had the right master, everything was taken care of. So we have to go back and take a more honest look at slavery and understand that God has, in a sense, legitimized it when it's handled correctly by saying this is the way you're to view your relationship to Jesus Christ. Now, 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 now. I sent that to my Reformed brothers, my Reformed Calvinist friends, and I said, is this your man's? <clears throat> and they were saying, well, he's not advocating for chattel slavery in America because he would never do such a thing. He's not pro-slavery. He's advocating for the metaphor of be slaves to Christ. You were slaves to sin, now be slaves to Christ. And he's saying well, we can redeem the concept of slavery because God and us were slaves to God. We're no, no longer slaves to sin. That was one of the explanations. He, there's no way he's advocating for it, for slavery. I need your help on this. Okay, let's 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 run this back one more time, and let's see if I'm tripping. It is a little strange that um, we have such an aversion to slavery uh, because historically there have been abuses. We have an aversion to slavery because slavery was awful in America. Chattel slavery was terrible. You, you it wasn't like. Uh, biblical slavery where you had a bond servant relationship, right? You people own people and then that led to did the human the humanization of people being three fifths of a person, three fifths of a man, right? And people not having the same rights, people being viewed as biologically inferior to other races. Chattel slavery was extremely offensive to God, extremely offensive to the Imago Dei. So here, I think he needed, if that's what he meant, if he meant slavery in the context of uh, us being slaves to Christ, he needed to clean that up. He needed to be very clear with his words uh, because it doesn't seem like it was chopped and edited to make him look crazy, right? This just seems like really sloppy on his part to say something like this. You know, there have been abuses in marriage. We don't have an aversion to marriage, particularly. So he says, because there's been abuses, and then he goes all these other things of marriage and bosses and you know, all these other institutions that have these things, eh, kind of a sus parallel. Can be involved. The reason unions grew up in America was not to free slaves. The reason it's unions grew up in America was because there were people who had businesses and they were abusing their employees. So yeah. to throw out slavery as a concept simply because there have been abuses, I think, is to miss the point. In any kind of human relationship, there can be abuses. There can also be benefits for many people poor people perhaps people who weren't educated perhaps people who had no other opportunity working for a gentle 
caring, loving master was the best of all possible worlds. If he had the right master, everything was taken care of. So we have to go back and take a more honest look at slavery and understand that God has, in a sense, legitimized it when it's handled correctly by saying this is the way you're to view your relationship to Jesus Christ. So he says God legitimized it. I don't, I don't know about that, man. I think I think our context in America with slavery is is very difficult to detach from the 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 word today. If you want to talk about a bond servant, right, where you are you, I guess you can kind of parallel that to like a, a residency internship. Right? Like you're going and working somewhere for food and shelter while, right? Like, I don't know, like maybe like Job Corps or something. Like, and I guess you can parallel that to, I mean, even that, like, that's not, that's not quite the same thing, right? I'm just trying to follow along and, and like, I'm really at a loss for words for this, right? Um, like, bond servant and slave modern American slavery are absolutely not the same thing. And so again, was he just sloppy with his words? Is that what he was referring to? Yeah. And an, an, an indentured servant, debt bond servant. Yes. Not chattel slavery. Absolutely. So at the very least that he falls short in not being very clear of what an indentured servant is and to not conflate it with chattel slavery, which was unique in that you could flat out own people, right? People that were viewed as less than human. Um, it's not out of context. I'm not a MacArthur guy. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Truth. I got the full clip for me. Huge fans, huge fans, huge fans. There's a link pinned up to our new podcast launch. So that is coming up October 20th. And I, I literally need every single person to click the pinned link and please sign up for it. It's $7. If you're a Patreon, there's a discount code at 30%. Discount. I teamed up with Moment for the exclusive live premiere of the anticipated Bless God podcast. And what I need you to do is tune in to experience a roller coaster of emotions as I pull out the most shocking stories, experiences, and insights from an elite lineup of guests. This is an exclusive podcast experience with live behind the scenes commentary, Q&A, and more. Your ticket gets you access to the exclusive live event, early access to new merch, specifically this hoodie right here, and private links to the first five unreleased full podcasts. You guys haven't seen any of this stuff yet. And the tickets for that are only $7. When you get to the main page, click the yellow get ticket button, scroll down to the add-ons and throw in your ticket to the after party as well as some exclusive merchandise. And I will see you there. Bruce Lawn. perhaps people who weren't educated, perhaps people who had no other opportunity, working for a gentle, caring, loving master was the best of all possible worlds. If he had the right master, everything was taken care of. So we have to go back and take a more honest look at slavery and understand that God has, in a sense, legitimized it when it's handled correctly by saying this is the way you're to view your relationship to Jesus Christ, the perfect all wise, all loving, all compassionate, all beneficent Lord, and you willing to be his slave because of such unique care. I didn't hear a whole bunch of context there. Okay, shout out to Ray. He said, African slaves were a kidnapped people. The penalty is death. The penalty for kidnapping is death. Right? Can you... Is he, you know, would, I don't know if Calvinists would reconcile that with manifest destiny and say it was all within God's will, even though the consequences for the injustice was death. Even though some would argue that, you know, there was Africans that sold Africans into slavery, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Let's Provided see. by him. If you ask me to be a slave, I will simply ask you one question. Who is my master? If you tell me that my master loves me with a perfect love from which I can never be separated, if you tell me that my master will pour out all his riches on my behalf and hold nothing back, if you tell me that my master knows me 
and knows what is best for me and in every case will provide everything that is best for me, if you tell me that my master will use me in the advancement of his own enterprises and that I will share in his reward, if you tell me that my master will make me as a son and give me all that he possesses as an... Yeah, but that's not slavery in our context. So is he trying to change our modern definition of slavery or is he trying to soften it? Right? Because you're talking about you just literally escalated. No, he escalated. He pivoted from slavery is be is being is owning a person, right? Is owning a person to slavery is you're a son, you're adopted. That's a, that's a big difference there, is it not, friends? <laughs> it's a huge difference, right? We are slaves to Christ, but Christ is perfect. Christ is Lord. He's he's God. He's all good, all knowing, all powerful. Right? So this is very sloppy on his part, even with the context is, no, you paralleling that to a human and what human is going to adopt his slave as his own child? I mean, maybe there's some random case somewhere, but generally speaking, brother, that's, that, that, that's goofy. If you tell me that my master will forgive all my sins and reward me forever, your master, if you are a slave and is a master, your master has no right to forgive your sins. Only God can, can forgive sins. So this is, again, like, huh? I can't sign up fast enough to be a slave of that master. Stop it. You are not going to be owned by another person or be a bond servant fast enough to a guy that can do all these cool things for you. And You're not. Because you have your own ministry with your own desires, with your own dreams, even though he would say it's all, you know, he's doing it all for God, which I, I believe he is because he's pastor and yada, yada. But we all have our own things that we believe we're called to. And sometimes it could be a very sloppy journey in terms of figuring how and what it takes to get there. But the extended clip definitely did not help here, guys. And, and that is the issue. Slavery is not objectionable if you have the right master. It's the perfect scenario everything it's the perfect scenario bro how about the perfect scenario is that we can develop skills that serve other people and we can control how we monetize those skills and we can sell products and goods and services at a profit I mean, that sounds a lot better than being owned by someone for your skills or your value. Uh, does he know how many church fathers were buying slaves just to free them? I mean, Jonathan Edwards had slaves, and then his son was one of the biggest abolitionists, right? Jonathan Edwards is a guy that these guys look up to. He's a big uh, reform guy. In a caring, loving environment where God provides all that we need through Christ. That's what it means to be a Christian. I don't know. I think that was really bad. And I think it's okay for those of you guys that are team Calvinist, those of you guys that are team John MacArthur, it's okay to pause and say, yeah, no, that was bad. Like he did not communicate that clear. He should have been specific about how being, you know, a bond servant is different. An, indent an indentured servant is different than what we have in our modern context. Like he, he, sh yeah, I mean, the, the, like the Old Testament is a lot of, obviously the book of Exodus, them, them folks are getting out of slavery, right? They're getting out of slavery. Like God is, sends Moses back to his people to get them out of slavery, right? The, the, the idea of the New Testament is that we're being liberated from our sin, which is our master to a, to God, the master, not to another human master. There's a book, uh, I think Phil Men, about Paul encouraging them to reconcile that relationship. But again, even that requires context. Like that requires, hey, this is way different than what we know to be slavery in America. When you're talking about owning people and owning people's means to produce and they have no autonomy and you're paralleling that to unions and marriage, that's pretty, that's pretty wonky. As, as, as much as some of John MacArthur's Bible teaching is solid, I don't, I don't know how, how you use this sort of language. Because the question is going to come up, what about slavery in the Bible? Yes, when there is 
indentured servants, it's different because eventually you can have your freedom. I mean, some of you guys are indentured servants. You've stacked up so much student loan debt, and at some point, they they could even just take that money right out. If you get in debt with the IRS, they could take that money right out of your. They could take that money right out of your 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 checks, right? So it's just to some 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 extent, we have some indentured servitude here. You are gambling your future earnings with your present decisions to go to college, which is I think that's a very predatory system in and of itself, federally insured student loans. But that's not the same as the word slavery and what it means here. But yeah, garnishing your wage is like a form of indentured servitude. I mean, the only difference is I guess you live and you can live on your own or live at your parents' house, you know? <sighs> Interns. It's a form of endangered servitude. At the very least, it's a sloppy. At the worst, he kind of has a distorted view of uh, taking a word and looking at it through the lens of the metaphor that Jesus used. It's like taking the word marriage and looking at it through the lens of Christ will be uh, Christ and the church is the, ma- right? Like, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, we could take the word marriage, but marriage means one thing in our context, and then God, that's also used as a metaphor. So you're taking the metaphor and you're trying to, to, to make it fit, and then you get all kinds of goofy people saying that, like, Song of Solomon was about Jesus and the church, and there's going to be all kinds of, you know what I mean? And it's like, no, no, Song of Solomon is about a man and a woman doing things. Was biblical slavery righteous? I would say it would depend. Clearly not in Egypt. That was bad. Right, so I would say it would depend on who and what and when and why. I'm sure when the Israel was Israel was taken captive by Babylon, that wasn't good. But isn't the Bible supposed to define the definitions and not culture? Yes, yes, it is. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about marriage means this. Marriage means one man, one woman covenant. Marriage is also used as a metaphor. Marriage is a, is a metaphor for our relationship, the church's relationships, not our individual relationships. The church's relationship with God. It's a metaphor, okay? The bridegroom, all the parables, those are metaphors. And then you have slavery. This too is a metaphor. It's not literal, right? Like sometimes we miss it in terms of what is allegory, what is metaphor, what is similes, what are hyperbole. Those are literary devices. So you don't look at marriage through the lens of Christ and the church. You look at marriage in the context of what does it mean to be married to a person? And what does the scripture say about marriage? What does the scripture say about wife? What does the scripture say about husband? Yada, yada, yada. You don't jump to, well, marriage between Christ and a church and then try and make everything fit into that. That's a metaphor for it. In the same sense that people have bad theology, in my opinion, around the book of Song of Solomon. Because they're trying to fit that theology into the metaphor. I don't think you do that. I think, oh, this is, a, this is clearly a metaphor. Slavery in terms of us being slaves to God instead of being slaves to sin is clearly a metaphor. Biblical slavery in the Bible and the translators are totally different. People would voluntarily sell themselves into slavery or they were able to buy themselves out and jubilee free. 100%. 100%. So, and words change. That's also, you also got to factor that in. Like words also change. Things change, Right. And yes, of course, Arabs enslaved a lot of people and Muhammad enslaved a lot of people. All that stuff is, is also true. And all that stuff was wicked. I believe there's more people enslaved under, under you know, Islamic traditions than any other thing. And that caused, supposedly caused some of this stuff. Inspiring philosophy, shout out to him, great, great channel, would argue that biblical slavery was a compromise, not an ideal. I, w- I would say uh, biblical polygamy was a compromise, not an ideal. I would, I, would, I would extend that there, right? Just polygamy in the Bible, was that God's ideal? I don't think so. I think that was a compromise. If Johnny Mac packaged this under the guise of servitude, it'd probably be better. It probably hit better than leading with slavery. That encompasses the entire conversation. Words are important. If we're talking about servitude, if we're talking about slavery, words change, the definitions change. You have to read the room. You have to know that when most people think of slavery in our context, they're thinking of chattel slavery in America, transatlantic slave trade, so on and so forth, right? So... I think we have to factor that in. And it says that Simeon blessed God.